often when we talk about critical thinking and information, uh, we use the term information literacy. So, so basically information literacy um, refers to the ability to think critically uh, and make balanced judgments about any information uh, we find and use. And um, so we can use that in, in many different contexts and in the context of your everyday life, you've probably already sort of developed certain critical thinking skills. Um, so, but we're talking about the sort of the, the educational um, context in this case, uh, here you're, you're, you're working or you're, you're studying in, in, in a, a third level institution. Uh, and so there are particular, um, you know, kinds of critical thinking skills that you uh, want to to be able to develop. They're a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more precise, uh, a little bit more specific uh, in terms of what they are and how they work. Um, but these critical thinking skills are, are, are handy enough. You'll be able to take them with you um, whether you decide to carry on in third level onto master's or PhD work. Um, but also when you carry on to any kind of a workplace. So. Uh, these kinds of critical thinking skills, being able to evaluate information uh, and think uh, in a critical way about different sources of information uh, will uh, will be handy for you in, uh, in, any, in any particular workplace that you wind up in. So um, you can think on your own or, or in a small group about uh, these questions. Um, where are the different places you can find information? How do you know the information is good information? So um, if you want to pause the video, you can you can stop to think about this, um, uh, about the different places you go for information and when you decide what's good information that you can act on and what's not so good information that, that you decide, you know, not to not to use. And these skills are, you know, possibly uh, more important in today's world than, than ever um, in these, this era of, of, of fake news, right? So um, we have a lot of fake news circling around, circling around the internet, um, which is, you know, the internet is full of uh, amazing information, uh, but also a lot of um, well, fake information. Uh, and so we have a couple of examples here. Uh, deep fakes is something that's, that's hit the news a, a fair bit lately. And um, um, you can use really sort of sophisticated, uh, you know, technologies to create deep fakes. Uh, so a deep fake is when you, when you, you, um, you make it look like somebody famous is, is saying something uh, when they actually aren't. Uh, so again, you can use some sort of really fancy technology to do that, but you can also, in the case of uh, uh, the Nancy Pelosi video here that's linked to on the, on the left, um, somebody just took a video of, of this. This is a famous US politician and, um, and they just slowed down the video and it made her appear to be drunk, right? Um, so it was quite effective, uh, but you know, didn't really require any fancy technology to do. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, uh, I suppose that's a, it's, it's a warning sign about, about um, how easy it is to spread uh, fake information out there. Um, and so in, in the context of one's everyday life, um, or as, as, as citizens, um, how important it is to be, to be, um, uh, to be discerning about the information that you're confused, or that you're, that you're uh, consuming and using. Um, so in the academic context, it's not just about separating out what's fake from not fake. Um, and um, there are a number of different things that you can think about. And um, this here is what's known as the, as the crap test. And it just sort of lays out a number of different criteria along the lines of which you can, um, you can evaluate information. And um, you know, currency is one that's fairly straightforward. So you probably know again from your everyday life um, you know, looking around, um, if, if you decide you want to buy something or you want to, you know, book a, a, an Airbnb or something like that. Uh, so, you, so what do you do? You, you go and you look for the reviews uh, about these things. And, um, you know, you know, certain things like um, you know, reviews of more detail or better, you know, that they're, you know, it's more likely that they're authentic. Um, and just able to to learn a lot more about it from from a review that has more detail than something else, but as well, you you know you sort of intuitively know that the more recent ones are are, are going to be the better ones. Um, they'll apply to the most recent you know model of a product, um, and whatnot. Um, it'll account for any you know changes in a neighborhood if you are you know booking some sort of a, a B and B or whatever. 
Um, so currency is, is, is one thing to think about when you're evaluating information. Uh, other ones include relevance. Um, this is, can be quite a tricky one. And um, um, in terms of the kinds of, of, of sort of more advanced uh, search tools that you'd use, like um, subject specific databases of the library catalog, um, that we'll be talking a bit more about that later on. Um, authority. So uh, we have something, um, as, you know, scholarly literature um, is uh, based on a process of what's called peer review. Uh, okay. And uh, so that's something that lends something authority. So when you know that something's peer reviewed, you know that it is more authoritative than something um, that isn't. Um, so these are the kinds of things that you can think about um, to evaluate information and decide whether something is useful for you uh, in the context of an assignment that you're working on. And this is just one way, you know, of thinking about it, um, uh, these particular criteria. There are other ones that, that you can use, other tests. Uh, but uh, it's good to, you know, put some, some terms to, uh, some, spe some specific terms to some of the things that you ought to think about um, as you're, as you're uh, navigating around um, uh, information.